G'day guys, Fishing Australia here. Today, me, Jaden, we're out here on, believe it or not, it's Brushy Lagoon. There's no wind. Jaden's hooked himself somehow. No, nah, it's just line. It's line. So yeah, it, it is like this is a first. It's not blowing a gale at Brushy Lagoon. Um, they've released some rainbows and some browns, but yeah. If you've watched since last year, you know I never catch them, but we'll always try. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're going to be fishing absolutely everything, trying to get onto a couple, fish the whole thing. So, yeah, see you guys when we hopefully get on. This video is proudly sponsored by All Good Sign System. They have everything you need for trout fishing at super cheap prices. Make sure you head in next time you're in Launceston. Also, don't forget to subscribe as it's just one click and it's free and it really helps me out. And make sure you enjoy the rest of this Fishing Australia video. Oh my god, we're just sitting here. We're just sitting here mouthing. We're just sitting here mouthing Brushy Lagoon. Blah blah blah. Oh, never got a brown trout out of it. And then this happens. And I didn't record it. Oh well, guys. Well, there we have it. So if we swing him over here. A nice brown. We have got. We have got one for the dinner table. That's what I called him on. I was just fishing the Crucius rod and the little tiny size two Meps. Just casting. We're up very shallow, and I was just casting around these trees and. Voila! He came along and he ate it. And that is a surprise. Whew. So anyway, this one is going to be one for the dinner table. Considering it is a catch and take fishery, nobody really releases them here. So if you want to chuck out the brag mat up the back, Yep. Got a 41 and a half centimetre brown. <laughs> a pretty good one at that. Nah. Just grab a couple more. So guys, so anyway, we're gonna keep this one today. So, to keep your catch the best possible way you can, you wanna kill them as soon as possible. So, if I wasn't recording, this fish would have already been dead, just straight away. But, anyway, grab out the knife kit. And I'm just going to kill him and we'll process him later. So his eyes there, about there, just there. That's his brain. That's that's not ideal, but it happens every now and then. So yeah, just that little bit behind his brain, right there. So that's gone through his brain. So now he's dead. That's a uh, least harmful way to kill him and then he'll just bleed out there but anyway we'll chuck him in the yeti bucket and keep on fishing oh my god here comes the yeti bucket oh, 
little bit more. Beautiful. Chuck in there. Don't care about my chomper. And now our Mr. Brown Trout goes into the water and he is ready to be processed when we are bored and can't catch any more. Wow, what a change of events. This is nice. We're on again. He's a good fish. Let's go. He's another good fish. Like he's solid. He is solid. Hell yeah. Hey guys, he's another solid one on that Celter again, just absolutely providing the goods. So, this one will be another keeper. So, now we've got one each. He's just oh, he's at the 49 mark, but that is. This is a nice fish. If you want to grab the phone. Hell yeah, look at the pretty spots on him. So like I say guys, if you watch majority of my videos, 40, 49 centimeter. Oh, oh, there, yeah, 49 just. So if you watch my videos, you'd know, majority of my fishing is catch and release. So I, it, I do my best to catch and release, but Brushy Lagoon, none of the fish that get put in it, are, majority of them are, so they're triploids, so that means that they cannot breed. So they're purely put in for catch and cook. Um, and the other thing is, a few fish that get put in here that can breed, they have no running water. There's no running water around the whole lake for them to push up. So it is purely for enjoyment. It is purely for hunger. So that's why I'm keeping these fish today. I just wanted to let everybody know that. But anyway, another good one. We're gonna keep him and chuck him in the Yeti bucket. And well, this is a very unexpected good day. Yeah. He was catching, so I moved my rods in between his two. He was still catching when I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, fish on it. Oh, come on. Ah, bugger. Yeah. No, but it was all right. Well, guys, a very successful start. Fish shallow. Um, got out of the algae for a bit and um, found some fish. But anyway, um, we're going to head down, fish some deeper sticks, and then We'll come up here and do another run of that when it's a bit warmer. Give some time to fish to cool down from seeing our boat. But anyway, we're going to troll down, then we'll do it up. But wish us luck.
I'm on. I'm actually on. Oh yeah, it's a rainbow. It's a rainbow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes! Finally! Oh! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! That's my biggest rainbow. That's my biggest rainbow. Yeah. Oh, I've caught him in Hadspin too. Let's go. He absolutely chomped that. He absolutely chomped that and I thought I was snagged. And then I felt a head shake and I was like, nah, you're getting out of that. Hey? And the good little boy decided to come out. So you can sort of tell. Like, if you've seen a, if you've caught brown trout, like wild brown trout, you can tell that they are, well, pretty much what I'm trying to get out is a wild brown trout that is 35 centimeters is nowhere near this fat. But rainbows, which are, so this is a triploid fish. So it has a extra chromosome. So pretty much, are you on? So pretty much how they do that is at a certain stage of when they're in the um, egg stage, they get squashed and that makes another chromosome and that means so they can't breed but they grow up and all they want is food so a fish that is that long grows that fat and then you get the majority of these rainbows that have been released so like that fish would be close to a kilo and it is, we'll get an exact measurement on, you, on there for you. But it is not as long, nowhere near as long as those other fish, but it would weigh around the same. Do you want to fast forward the electric and get us into the shallows? So yeah, we're looking just 40 centimeters, and he's easily a kilo. It's a good idea. It's a good idea, Mr. Jade. So, we've got that one. And this is the smaller first brown that we caught. So, they are pretty much the exact same size. The brown is a little bit bigger. Look at the difference in fatness. This one is thin. That one is chunky. So that's what happens when they get an extra chromosome put in. So they can only... They can only... Don't worry about it. So they can only breed. Uh, they can't breed, I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. So they're put in for recreational fishing and catch and keep. And this one's another one for the dinner plate. Good stuff. Ew!
So guys, um, the fish for the day, plus that bigger one, Jane's gonna do that one, I'm gonna do the little rainbow, but all trout are the same for cleaning. You just, it is pretty simple. So I'm not gonna fill at them or anything. I'm gonna leave the skin on them and leave all that good. Righto, so you can't see me, which is a good thing. Um, but anyway, so we're just gonna start off by grabbing the fish and going to the belly. And you just cut in there and you cut all the way up. Make sure to cut away from yourself so you don't cut yourself. And there we go. Once you get right through to the top, you want to sort of go in behind the gills and just cut them out. Just like that. And then it'll open up. So you just want it to open up like that. And then there you are. So you've got all of its guts inside. You just want to put your hand in there, pull them all out. Jesus. So that's his belly line. So you can see what he's been eating there. And if you have a look there, it's just tiny, tiny little shellfish. That's all he's been eating, tiny, tiny little shellfish. So when he's seen the good old MEP spinner come along, he thought that is a good dinner for sure and he gobbled it all down anyway so yeah push that out that's a little bit close to the poo way but I know. now you just want to pull all of his guts out you can cut this or it will just rip out usually but it's not going to do today so if you do need to cut it just sort of put your knife in there and just cut across and out she will come eventually once I get the knife in the right place I'll just do it there for now so yep yeah, that's all guts you don't want that now you get the top bit that. So you got the bloodline there, that's right up the top, so you want to put your knife straight into that and cut all of that, cut into it. And then that's got the cover over it and you can just sort of dig your thumb into it and push it all out like that and you want all of that out like absolutely every single bit of it so i'm just going to get that out in the water and i'll be back in half a second so anyway guys that is majority of it out so now the next step is you want to take his gills and you just sort of want to put your fingers in between it and just rip them out and then, after that, it's just a little bit more cleaning. You just want to pick off all the guts and all that. And then get all these black bits out. And then once all these black bits are out, all you got to do is scale it and then it is ready for the plate. So I'll just do that and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So guys, I'll have to do a, another, just look over it when I get back. But that is the rainbow trout ready to be cooked. Nice and clean in there, pretty much all. I'm, I'll just give it another run through when I get home. But yeah, so anyway, we'll see you guys in the kitchen.
Righto, ladies. So anyway, um, got a bit mad. Threw an egg, but um, that's all good. So anyway, today we're going to be cooking the rainbow. So we'll just take. Oh, good, good. There we go. Take him off the paper towel. We'll just leave him there for the time being. And we'll chuck Mr. Brownie back in the fridge. Righto guys, so anyway, now we are here. Um, we're just going to get into it. So um, I'm going to cook them in the oven, as you guys would have saw. Um, ideally, oh my god. Ideally you would have foil and just put wrap it in foil and put it on the tray but of course I don't so we're just gonna run with some baking paper and chuck the trout on top so the trout is pretty all right scaled I'm not gonna say good because I can still see them but you can sort of you can once they're cooked you can peel the skin off them so anyway we're just gonna pop him there and I'm just gonna get right into spicing him so what well, first up we'll Cut up a bit of lemon into their slices. This one is absolutely tough as, so that's why I got him, because at least then I don't have to put a perfectly fine one in there. But just cutting it up into circles like this, probably need about three for this one. It's just like that. I'm just gonna drop them in side. So there's the first bit done. Um, with the leftover, I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top. Just like that. Righto, next up. Ah, lemon juice stings in the cut. So we got butter. Then take a big, big load of that. I'm just gonna spread that inside. I'm trying to get it on both sides, I'm not doing a very good job of it, but it's, it'll melt through it obviously. Um, so there's that, so that's done. And last of all, um, I'll do that later actually. So we're just gonna cut into the fish with a knife, just some straight through cuts like that. So now it is open, so we can put some of our spices in. So we're gonna go with a rage of this. So this is Everglades fish and chicken spice. This is like to die for. And then I just got basic salt, basic pepper, chicken salt, and I'm just gonna run it all through. But this Everglades fish and chicken spice is absolutely amazing. It makes fish taste so good. And you just gotta try it for yourself. So if you want to try it, it's available at All Good Launceston. And it's only $10 for this whole tube. And this tube has lasted me, it'd be up to, it'd be at least four plus months. And I mean, you can tell, I put a fair bit on. So anyway, we're just gonna do up this side. So that's pepper, do that. Like it salty, then we got the chicken salt. Who doesn't love a good bit of chicken salt? Or in this case, a lot of chicken salt. So anyway, there's that. Now I'll just sort of hold him up like this. Put some more in. Oh, that was a lot of pepper. Salt. Righto, and now, something I'm going to try. Never done it before. Got our egg. I'm just going to crack it. Oh, that was a horrible. So I'm just going to crack it 
in the middle there. So there is an egg inside the trout. I'll just chuck it over there. And then I'm just going to flip him and sort of close that so he's in there. And we'll just see how it comes out. But anyway, now to do the exact same on the other side. So just cut, 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 spice it up, and then we'll put her in the oven. We'll see you when we're done. So that looks pretty good. There's a... Anyway, I'll just grab a knife and fork and then we'll get looking. So guys, there it is. Um, pretty good looking. I'll just scrape your lemon out. And one more in there, etch gum. And then we'll lift her up. Oh, no, we don't. That'll do. So, um, yeah, well, anyway, we'll just grab a lemon. I'm sloppy at this catch and cook thing. So anyway, we've got our big lemon. Well, there we go. The lemon is on it. So anyway, I'll give it a taste test. So just dig right in. So there it is. It's a pretty damn good one to get the bones out of your mouth. Um, obviously, it's because I just cooked it whole. You can skinless fill a bone, um, boneless fillet them, and then you won't have to worry about bones. But trout bones are pretty big, easy to get through, and very good. You can definitely taste that. Everglades fish and chicken spice, it just, it's just so good and just makes fish so much better. But anyway, I'm going to eat this one and maybe give Penny a little bit. Let me check. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Oh, if you guys enjoyed it, like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.